In this video, we will see how to evaluate the continuous time Fourier transform from the Laplace transform. We're going to start with the Laplace transform in the form of a ratio of polynomials, which can be obtained from a constant coefficient differential equation, as was mentioned in my video on the Laplace transform. And we get the following form. Now again, this can be plotted in the s-plane in the Laplace space by just plotting the poles and the zeros which fully characterize the system. This may look something like is depicted over here with x's representing poles and o's representing zeros and once again we have a region of convergence that is associated with this Laplace transform which tells you for which values of s the transform h of s actually converges. If the j omega axis is in the region of convergence, then the Fourier transform of h of t exists. We can see this by looking at the definition of the Laplace transform and once again recognizing that the Laplace transform is the Fourier transform of, of h pre-multiplied by e to the minus sigma t. Well, we can furthermore see that if sigma is equal to zero, which corresponds to the imaginary axis here because sigma is the real axis at sigma equals zero then we have here the Fourier transform of h of t itself and so if the Laplace transform is convergent for every value on the imaginary axis that means that the Fourier transform of h of t exists and is in fact nothing more than the Laplace transform evaluated at values of s equal to j omega when sigma is equal to zero. In general this would correspond to simply plugging in j omega instead of s into the transfer function h of s. We can then evaluate the magnitude and the phase of this in a rather straightforward way. The magnitude of h of j omega is equal to the magnitude of this entire thing well, that's just going to be the magnitude of this constant c that gets factored out front times the magnitude of each one of these individual terms. And the phase of h of j omega is going to be equal to, using the properties of complex numbers, is going to be equal to the phases of the terms in the numerator added together minus the phases of the terms in the denominator added together. For example, suppose that we have the following poles and zeros. If we want to evaluate the magnitude and the phase of the Fourier transform at a particular value of omega, suppose we want to evaluate it right here, this would be something like, let's say, omega is equal to 1.5 or whatever value this actually is along the imaginary axis. We will look at the vector from each of the poles and zeros to this location. That's what's denoted by j omega minus z1, j omega minus p1, and so on. It's going to be these vectors. And then for the magnitude, we're going to look at the ratio of the magnitudes of the zeros, the zero vectors here, let's call this one m1, its magnitude, this is m2, and this is m3, then the magnitude of h of j 1.5, since that's what we're evaluating this particular point, is going to be equal to m1 <laughs> divided by m2 times m3. The angle or the phase is going to be the angle that the vector makes with the real axis. So here we have this, let's call this phi1. This angle over here within there will be phi2, a little hard to see, and the angle here will be phi3, and therefore the angle of h of j 1.5 the phase is going to be phi1 minus phi2 plus phi3. 
And we can do this for every point omega along the imaginary axis, and that's going to give us our entire Fourier transform. That's how it's actually evaluated. I have an example in MATLAB which shows this graphically as an illustration. Specifically, we're going to look at the transfer function h of s defined by s plus 2 divided by s plus 1 minus 2j times s plus 1 plus 2j. So this has 1, 0 at negative 2 and 2 poles, 1 at negative 1 plus 2j and 1 at negative 1 minus 2j. This is what the evaluation of the Fourier transform looks like. In the top right, you can see the magnitude of the Fourier transform being traced out, and in the bottom right, the phase. And the left, you can see how the vectors trace along the j omega axis to find each one of those points and calculate it. And that's exactly what I was showing when I was drawing things myself. But this shows that as it goes along for every value of omega that we're interested in. In this case, from negative 10 to 10. But again, this could equally apply to all values of omega from negative infinity to infinity. Altogether, we have seen how to evaluate the Fourier transform from the Laplace transform, as well as the physical meaning of this operation.